Hello everyone and welcome on the very first video of Beyond Ballistics, the channel dedicated to hopefully interesting projects that are not exclusively related to ballistics. As promised, I'm going to show you how the Gyrojet 2.0 rockets were made and give all the additional details that didn't fit in the main video. First comes the casing. Making a thin walled deep tube made of steel is no easy task. Consider that even NBA Associates, the company that made the original Gyrojets, outsourced the production of their cases. Luckily, I found out that I already had some perfect cases laying around, and most of you probably do as well. CO2 canisters are made of heat-treated steel and designed to resist very high pressures. I'm not expecting these cases to fail from internal pressure at less than 400 bars, which is way more than we're going to need. I chose 100 bars, or 1500 psi, as the design pressure of Gyrojet 2.0. Of course, we don't need the next section of the bottle, so I parted it off on the lathe. Any means of cutting steel straight would have worked as well. The complete case length is 60 mm. The only thing I will do to it is drill a hole for the cross pin, but I do that with the nozzle already inserted so that they get drilled together and I don't risk misalignments. So off to the nozzle we go. For larger numbers I'm having them done on a CNC machine, but I'll show you how I've made the prototype ones, those you saw tested in the other videos. First of all, I started with an aluminum bar and turned it to size. Don't take example from me, I'm not a machinist, I just had to adapt. After that, I started parting 12mm long slugs, but the process was quite tedious, so I stuck the rod in the bandsaw and used that instead. With the slugs cut to length, it was time to drill the two ports. This is easier said than done though, and I've gone through the same struggle that MBA must have gone through back then. Firstly, I need to drill at an angle, in my case 8.5 degrees, although I'm not sure this is the optimal value. To do that, I used a plastic fixture that allowed drilling the holes on a normal drill press by flipping the piece 180 degrees between one hole and the other. I would first go in with a 2.5mm center drill, followed by a 2.5mm normal drill. I would sink the center drill down until it makes a dent, the same diameter as the outlet, which was conveniently chosen to be 6.3mm, equal to the shank of the center drill. After that, I used a conical bead to obtain the divergent section of the nozzle. The angle has to be between 20 and 30 degrees. Using an angle closer to 30 degrees allows making a slightly shorter nozzle. In my case, however, the only tool I could find off the shelf was this 20 degree die grinder bit, so I had to stick with it, although it's far from ideal since it's not designed to cut while being completely surrounded by material. As you can see, I'm doing three different operations per hole with three different tools. This problem could be solved by using a purpose-made center drill with a 30 degree angle instead of the usual 60 and a longer center, but I don't have the experience needed to do that and couldn't spend more time looking for somebody to do it. MBA had their own custom-made beads they used for gyrojets. If I'll make more in the future, I'll probably get a dedicated drill bead made as well. Anyway, after that, I would flip the part over and countersink the holes with a 90 degree angle so to form the converging section of the nozzle. This is the part that requires the least accuracy. Finally, I would insert the nozzle into the casing and with the help of another plastic fixture, drill a 4mm hole straight through everything, making sure that the bit passes between the two ports without touching them. The exact position is not important as long as the ports are not disturbed. After this, the nozzle is taken out because it's time to load the propellant. As I said, I originally started with the simplest shape possible, that of the tube, an uninhibited tubular grain of KNDX propellant as developed by Richard Naka. Actually, it's time to thank him because he has an incredibly comprehensive website on rocket motors, including characterization of many sugar-based propellants, available for free and constantly updated. If it wasn't for his shared knowledge, this project would have taken twice as long as it already did. Anyway, in any shape, the flagration proceeds from the surfaces inwards. The inside hole gets bigger and the outer one shrinks so that the overall surface can be kept roughly constant and a neutral burning is achieved. However, as I said, there is simply not enough surface area in this geometry to generate gas at the required rate. This is what hindered the original Gyrojet performance, 
they had to reduce nozzle size so that the propelling grain could keep up. However, by doing so, they lost on thrust. What I've done is going from the tubular shape to a coiled ribbon form, which has about the same mass, but twice the surface area. It is also relatively neutral burning, since the surface remains almost constant as the ribbon shrinks. The initial thickness is 3 mm. I also found convenient to prime the grain by dabbing its ends in black powder, which easily sticks to it. A trail of powder is also created in this corner to connect both ends. The grain is 40mm long and is just the right size to slide into the casing. Both the casing and nozzle are then degreased, the grain is inserted and the nozzle plate is put back in position with the use of medium thread locking compound that will prevent gas leakage. A steel cross pin, precisely cut to length, is then slid through and locked in place with the same thread locker. And that's about it, I guess. This is how I've made them. Once again, a huge thanks goes to my patrons, which as usual are all listed here. Thank you all for watching, subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I'll see you next time. Bye.